This is the 2011 Portland Century, Part 3. Part 3 was actually shot in early November, which will explain the leaves on the ground, the barren trees, and the cloudy skies. After leaving Eagle Fern Park, we face about three miles of rollers and flats until we get to Howlett Road. Once on the Howlett, we immediately begin a steep climb out of the Eagle Creek River Valley. This will be the next to the last Cat 5 climb, about one and a half miles, 250 feet. Right after crossing Wildcat Mountain Road, it looks like the end is near. Just a little steep out of the saddle pitch and it looks like we're done. But hidden right behind the climb is another steep little pitch. And hidden behind that second little climb is yet another steep little pitch. It's these hidden pop-up climbs that make this section so tough. As tough on your psyche as it is on your legs. But finally, as Howlett turns left, you will have attained the ridge between Deep Creek on the right and Eagle Creek and the Clackamas River Valley on the left. You can't tell this time of year, but in the summer there's a great view from this ridge. At about mile 68 you'll turn right on the Jed Road and shortly you'll arrive at the Highway 211 crossing. Take some care as the traffic goes pretty fast here and the drivers are somewhat sight restricted due to the fact that they're climbing a hill. The next few miles on Jed Road are pretty easy. It's pretty much a False flat descent with the occasional gentle roller. As with Howlett Drive, you'll have a great view from Judd Road into the Clackamas River Valley and the Cascade Mountains in the distance. But at about mile 71, Jed Road begins to drop. The descent begins very gently and gets steeper and steeper as the drop goes on. And for about a mile, you have the final wind in your hair, bugs in your teeth, descent of the ride. As you complete your drop into the Clackamas River Valley, on your right is the ridge that you'll soon be climbing. Drunk and losing ground. At mile 72, you'll turn right onto Amziger Road and begin a, five, a cat five climb. To shake your body free. The climb is a little more than 300 feet at about 1.4 miles and an average grade of about 3.2 percent. Put you through a phase. It's the last tough climb of the ride. And it seems I'm not saying that. As with the Howlett Road climb, just when you think you're at the top, you sadly discover that you are not. Away 
wait for you to wake up anymore Changing all your... But don't despair because from the top of this roller up ahead you've got about a 600 foot easy sled ride back into Portland with the exception of a couple of easy little hiccups along the way. Just past mile 74, you'll turn left on the Southeast Ritchie Road. Next stop, Boring, Oregon. This is downtown Boring, Oregon, and no, this is not the only stoplight in town. After a tenth of a mile, you'll leave downtown Boring and take a quick tour of the Boring suburbs. Leaving the suburbs, you'll have about three miles of fairly easy rollers before you hit the Springwater Trail, which is the sign that you're almost home. Just another easy 20 miles to go. The Springwater Trail is a rails to trails project extending from southeast Portland to Boring, Oregon. The trail is used extensively throughout the year by bike commuters, recreational cyclists, strollers, and joggers. And it's a tremendous community resource. At Southeast Hogan, there is this fun little switchback. You can avoid the switchback if you like by just staying to the right. To the right are the East Gresham and Main City Parks. Just beyond that is downtown Gresham. Not a bad place to stop and grab a snack when you're out riding the trail. At about mile 83 you'll hit Lineman Station which is the last rest stop on the 100 mile ride. At about mile 85, you'll pass Powell Butte Park, which is strangely one of the few parks in the Portland metro area that has mountain bike trails. At about mile 88, you'll pass under the I-205 freeway. There's a bike path that follows much of I-205 from Clackamas to the airport where it crosses the Glen Jackson Bridge into Washington. On the left is another Portland icon, food cart. This is 82nd Street and what can I say about 82nd Street except every city has one. Bell Road and Johnson Creek Boulevard, there's a tricky little busy intersection where the path swaps out to the other side of the road. For much of the way, the path follows Johnson Creek, 
which I believe is the mythical urban creek featured in the River Wye by David James Duncan. Although subject to many of the woes of an urban watershed, habitat restoration projects have improved matters greatly. At about mile 93, you'll leave the Springwater Corridor Trail and take a short stroll through the charming Selwood neighborhood. Quickly, you'll reach the Willamette River where you'll turn right and rejoin the Springwater Trail where you'll follow the east bank of the Willamette River to downtown Portland. This is a beautiful part of the trail that passes through the Oak Bottom Wildlife Refuge. In the direction of the sound, the surface of road from the radio, the moon is right. Road catching is the news I check. The conditions are about four miles to go as we pass under the Ross Island Bridge. We leave the Springwater Trail just before Omni and begin to wend our way through Southeast Portland to our final destination. Finally where we belong, everything besides. So eggs are short, the board are short, the board inside the rises. Just after mile 99, we turn right and cross the Burnside Bridge into Old Town, West Portland. This scene was shot during the week. There's not nearly this much traffic during the actual ride. After a few turns, we arrive on Broadway, the heart of downtown, and soon arrive at our destination. Finally, the finish line. At the end of the ride, the air is filled with the sound of live music, the smell of great food, and you'd be surrounded by a lot of very tired but happy riders. I hope to see you in 2012.